Hi, this right here is the Amazon Fire HD from 2017, a cheap tablet that, well, at first glance you may think is obsolete, but that couldn't be further from the truth. This tablet could still be a good option if what you're looking for is a dirt cheap and durable tablet. So in today's video we'll see what it can still do. The unit I have here belongs to my little sister and, as you can see, it's not been treated particularly well. There are missing pieces in the corners and it has several scratches as a result of big falls and rough use. However, the screen, which is the most important thing, is still intact. And that's the main benefit of plastic, it absorbs hits much better than metal. The HD10 has a modest design, not the most good looking but not ugly either. Despite weighing 500 grams, it feels good in the hand due to the rounded edges. On the back we find the Amazon logo and the camera. At the top, the headphone jack and the micro USB port. On the right side, we'll only find a small flap that covers the slot for a micro SD card. And on the left side, we find the stereo speakers. And finally on the front, we have the 10 inch screen along with some bezels that house the selfie camera. This tablet has a full HD display with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. The quality of the screen may not be comparable to that of a high-end tablet, but it's still pretty good. It's good enough for watching videos or reading indoors under the shade of a cloud, but in outdoor settings with direct sunlight, it falls short in brightness. The HD10 originally came out with Amazon's proprietary operating system, Fire OS 5.6, which was based on Android 5.1. The negative thing about this operating system is that some models have ads. And it doesn't have Google Play services by default, which means we have to install the Play Store on our own. In my case, I went a little further and slapped Android 9 on it, which has many benefits, but the trade-off are some bugs and glitches. So what I recommend is that if you're only going to use it for media consumption or reading, just install the Play Store and it'll be enough. If you want to go further and install a custom ROM, I recommend Lineage OS 12 and 16. The bad thing is that on Lineage OS 16, the camera and the headphone jack do not work. Inside we can find a 64-bit MediaTek processor with 8 cores. And after some googling, I found out that this processor is from 2015. That means we don't even have 2017 specs. Despite this, performance is actually not bad, especially for what it was made for, media consumption and reading. We can watch YouTube videos at 1080p and 60 frames per second without problems. The stereo speakers are at the bottom, which didn't convince me entirely as there was more than enough space to put them on the front. Anyway, the quality of the speakers is quite decent, but it should be noted that they don't sound super loud. For web browsing, it performs quite well. Obviously, it's not gonna load websites as fast as high-end devices, but I think it's good enough in that regard, as it loads Apple's website just fine. Aside from media consumption and reading, this tablet is also good for retro gaming. The PowerVR GPU inside is from the year 2014, which surprised me with what it can do, especially for casual and old games. GTA San Andreas runs very well, I didn't find any issues beyond some frame drops when there are many NPCs or vehicles, and having an old processor is not always a bad thing when playing old games like this one, since the game has been updated to run on newer devices and some devices don't even open the game anymore. Moving on to Roblox, the performance is quite good, with graphics set to medium, but this depends on the map since with some of them we'll have to lower the graphics to the lowest for it to run well, but doors, the map I'm playing runs more than well. The latest version of Minecraft surprisingly runs well. I didn't expect the performance to be this good, considering the GPU is from 2014. I have all the graphic effects activated and the chunks set to 6, and even though I'm playing online, which demands more resources, the game runs great as you can see, but probably with bigger maps we might have some issues. The same cannot be said about Life is Strange, which is a console game, 
the performance leaves much to be desired and as you can see the game is plagued with glitches and is very slow but the fact that I could even open the game and that it's somewhat playable for me is quite surprising. But speaking of surprises, what left me speechless is that League of Legends runs very well, much better than on the LG Q6 which has a newer processor and more RAM. This goes to show you that more power is not always better if it doesn't go hand in hand with good optimization. That being said, I don't recommend playing this game on this tablet since you will occasionally experience some lag and on this game it could cost you the match. And finally we have Call of Duty Mobile which runs much better than I expected, with graphics set to the lowest and frame rate to medium. With this we have an excellent performance. This game is really well optimized and is perfectly playable on this tablet. Emulating retro console shouldn't be that big of a deal. I tried using a PS3 controller with an OTG cable, but it didn't work, even though the lights were on. Probably there's something wrong with the custom room. Nevertheless, the performance using Mupin 64 with a resolution set to 2x is perfect. Conquer Bad Fury, which is the most difficult game to emulate on the Nintendo 64, also runs nicely. Though there are some occasional frame drops, so it's ideal to leave the settings by default if you want the best performance. But if this game can run this well, the other Nintendo 64 games will be nothing for this tablet. With PlayStation 1 we have an even better experience with the graphics set to 4x resolution and the audio with full sound effects and latency set to the lowest, Resident Evil 3 ran like butter. Crash Bandicoot 3 also runs perfectly, but with this game I had to lower the resolution to 2x since at 4x it was laggy. If there was only an option for 3x I think it would run the game with no lag. Moving on to PSP emulation and just like with the previous consoles, the vast majority of games will run just fine. GTA Vice City Stories, which is a fairly heavy game, runs without problems with a resolution set to 2x. Manhunt 2, which is also a heavy game, easily runs at 2x. I also tested other games like The Third Birthday, Kingdom Hearts, and Crash of the Titans, and they all ran fine. Though it's a little bit of a different story with top of the line games like God of War Ghost of Sparta which is perfectly playable, but you'll have to leave the resolution by default and set the frame skip to 1 if you wanna get a playable experience. The camera is where we can tell Amazon save costs. Both cameras are pretty much garbage, just like that. 
the quality is much lower than that of the Nexus 7 which came out in 2013. At best they're enough for a video call or to take a picture of a document but not much beyond that. And finally the 6300mAh battery is actually quite good. I usually get between 6 to 7 hours of screen on time but that will vary depending on how you use it. If you keep the brightness low and only use it for web browsing and YouTube, you could get up to 10 hours of screen on time. So the Amazon Fire HD 10 from 2017 still has some fight left in it. Despite the modest design and aging components, it can still handle tasks like media consumption, reading, web browsing and even retro gaming. The plastic build is durable and although it may not look as good as a premium tablet, it is functional. So I think it's still worth it if you can find it for 20 or 30 bucks. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.